David, if you'll lead us in a prayer or invocation. Father God, we just want to thank you for the night. We thank you for our city, Hartford, uh, board members on the city council. We thank you for the mayor and the, 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 excuse me, the clerk, so, water clerk, the night one, our visitors here, Lord. We ask you that we get the business in order and get it so the people of Hartford can enjoy good life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, we've got a visitor tonight, uh, Dan Drain, who's our, one of our accountants. He's going to give us an audit uh, review presentation tonight and see how bad we're doing. <laughs> staffing problems near the end of the year. We had two of our key people took other jobs at, at, the, right at the end of the year and one, both had accounting degrees, one was a CPA and as I told Lisa, those people aren't walking the streets of Hardensburg right now and we have to try to hire somebody so we're we're just trying to dig out of a big hole but you know, um, this staple copy is something we're just required to give you. The reason for this is because uh, when we conduct an audit, all the work that we do basically is uh, is done at this uh, level with the mayor and the staff and so forth. So uh, this is uh, basically to inform the council that you've been audited, what the purpose of the audit is, uh, no difficulties encountered, no uncorrected statements, uh, that you gave us all the information that we asked for. So the actual audit itself is the bound copies. Uh, it is clean opinion. That's on pages one, one through three. <clears throat> the financial statements then begin on page four. They are uh, statement in net position is the first one. This one started in 2004 that they Government's now required to give one of the presentations to be on a business-like basis. So the middle column of governmental activities, primarily the general fund, but it also would have road fund and some of those other minor funds in it. This presentation books everything, including this building, book, uh, police cars, fire trucks, uh, furniture and fixtures, records depreciation on it. And on the other side of it, it records debt, uh, long-term debt. The uh, middle one of business type activities is the water, sewer, sanitation has always had this kind of presentation. The reason being that those are, are really business activities because they, they're paid for primarily through user fees. But if you, if you see the, the um, total assets uh, under governmental activities, 5.6 million and 9.5 million on the business type, liabilities are almost 2 million on the uh, governmental, 4.2 on the business type. Between that and also with these deferred outflows, all of those things are, are functions of uh, county employee retirement systems. We are required now to book this on the same basis that if suddenly the state decided that every participating employer under CERS had to settle up with them right now. 
the total liability, not current for the city of, of Hartford, for the pension liability would be $2.1 million and the net OPEB liability, which is the fact that uh, CRS has to cover health insurance for the life of, of retired employees. So you put those two numbers together and then suggest a little by deferred outflows and inflows. But basically, it would cost Hartford right now over $2 million to settle up with the state if suddenly they decided that there's no other formula for it and all these participating employers had to had to uh, pay it up. You know, the odds of that aren't very good, but this liability is still hanging out there. And, and it's either to be done with tax increases or changing the system in some way. Page five, statement of activities. This is the same one. This is still the business type. Uh, all, all governments, the purpose of them is to provide services to its uh, citizens. So it begins with expenses and then to the right it shows how it's paid for. Well, the governmental activities cost $1.4 million to provide, but you see there's such a minimal amount of, of charges. So basically the government, governmental funds, mostly the, the uh, general fund, is paid for by these revenues at the bottom, uh, primarily taxes. But then the business act activities, you see water, sewer, and sanitation, and then you look over to the right and you see how those are paid for. Still, even with that, uh, every one of them every single one, water, sewer, and sanitation, also loss. Uh, overall, the, uh, the uh, governmental activities came out at the bottom line. Changes in that position was a positive 52413. But the changes in that position for the governmental activities, this is after some transfers, uh, was, on, was a loss of just about 9.4 9 million. For nine thousand four hundred dollars, I'm sorry. Then the balance sheet, page six, is the old traditional presentation. And for the governmental funds, all the books under this are assets and liabilities that are either currently available or that have to be paid in the short term. And under this, you have cash and receivables, uh, utility deposits, uh, two point eight million in assets, and thirteen thousand liabilities. So the fund balance, this is essentially the net worth under this presentation, two and a half million. And then at the bottom it shows how you get from this one to the 3.8 million that's shown on uh, net position. Page seven is the revenue and expenditures. That's probably a lot of what you've seen before. But the net change in fund balance on that for the uh, general fund is 600, almost $604,000 positive. Um, Fund balance at the end of the year in this presentation was positive two and a half million dollars. Then on page eight it shows how you get from, from that to the business type basis. And you see when you go through all that, there's not very much difference. It goes from five twelve to five twenty four. Page nine is a, a balance sheet for the three proprietary funds, water, sewer, and sanitation. And you've pretty much seen that before in the segment of activities. Page 10 is the uh, same three funds as the income segment. Uh, page 11 is cash flows, and that's literally money in and money out. And cash over the over all three funds together increased by $38,000. And you've got how, where that all comes from. Receipts from customers, uh, user for buying capital assets, making a bunch of payments on debt. Um, um, there's lots of notes beginning on page 12. Let's see, first one goes, it might be relevant. Uh, page 21 is uh, receivables and payables, note 5, and that shows what one fund may owe to another one. And, uh, you know, as you can see, over the years, there's been, a, there's been a lot of support for the water fund that's come from the general fund, and ideally, all these funds stand on their own, and of course, that takes, a lot of cases, great increases beyond what anybody really wants to do. And, and that situation is probably better than it was, but it's, it's still hanging out there that, if you, that, that by, it means that, that the water fund actually owes the general fund 1.2 million, and then, 
Uh, it owes all these other, uh, it owes sewer fund and sanitation fund. 22 is, is uh, usually pretty relevant. That's changes in fixed assets. Um, the main, the main additions in the governmental activities, infrastructure, uh, that's streets, uh, street improvements, sidewalks, business type activities, really not a lot of activity in that. A lot of that was done in years before that. You had a lot of federal money going on here in years before that. But uh, the end, uh, governmental activities, net after depreciation came off, was increased from 2.9 to 3 million. And then the business type activities from 9.8, actually uh, depreciation was a little more than the uh, than the new purchases were. In the bottom, fresh depreciation out activity. Page 23 is a debt structure, and that shows uh, that's all the debt of the city. The top part of the governmental activities. Uh, biggest one there is the uh, fire station, maintenance building, and land. No, no additions really to any of these this time. Everything was deletions. So uh, a substantial amount of debt was retired during the year, uh, 90, almost 95,000 on the business activities and uh, 43,000 on uh, governmental. And I was leasing on time. When I first started doing this audit, there was always another significant one in there because the city borrowed money just to operate on because there was never enough cash to get through until tax bills came out and so that's something you know realizing you got a lot of federal money now too but that's something even before that when the city had worked its way out of that it was a, it was at least able to cash flow itself all the time without having to borrow money for operations now 24 just shows uh, uh, some more detail on those same thing on 25 in all this business on these pension plans, that starts on page 26. This used to be about a page and a half. Now it goes to Harper's report. It goes in 26, uh, all the way to the top of 31. Mm. Page uh, 33 is usually of interest. That's the uh, general fund budget. And you can see on that that uh, the, uh, the, rev the actual revenues of general fund were almost 700000 more than budgeted. Uh, expenditures were 123598 but that has some capital outlay in it that wasn't included in the budget. So except for that, all of the normal current uh, came out really almost exactly the amount that was budgeted. Uh, but you see the bottom line on that. The fund balance uh, budgeted to have uh, a million five, and you hit almost two point six million at the end of the year. So your actual your actual budget was over a million dollars better than the amount that was budgeted. Starting on page thirty four, there's a lot more information on pensions. And that going all the way to the notes on thirty nine. Supplementary information. Um, Page 42, and that just breaks down. You have three what's considered non-major funds. It's cemetery, LGEA, and road fund. And then the income statement for those three funds. The road fund shown uh, on page 41, showing the loss is a little bit misleading because there's so many time issues in road money. Sometimes you get it and spend it both in the same year. Sometimes it shows a, a gain because you get the money and don't do the projects until the following year. <coughs> Sometimes you have the money on hand and you do it you do it in a year when you spend more than the amount that you took in. But still the, the road fund had a positive balance on the twenty five thousand dollars at the end of the year. Forty two breaks down the general fund in detail. Page forty three is a required report on uh, Compliance and internal control. Uh, 45 is a management level. Uh, these are the ones that we consider more in the area of uh, suggestions than anything. Um, and the only matter we included in that was that particularly well, so much you got 
did your bank balances during the year exceeded the two hundred fifty thousand dollars that the FDIC allows? So the way that, that cities compensate for that is that they get the banks to put some securities. And Lisa said she had those now at this time fully fully covered. So that basically the problem I'm trying to do with FDIC is there aren't enough banks in Ohio County. You can't spread it out enough to have two hundred to have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in each one and be able to cover the amount of the amount of cash that you had on hand at the end of the year. So this is uh, probably the only one of these that we don't have several detailed findings. And the only thing we had on this one is just that one that it's really more than of suggesting anything else. We generally will have uh, findings on internal control. Uh, but a lot of our cities also are so small that they only have one or two people working in the office and there's no way that they can have that same kind of control system. But you all go to quite a bit of trouble here to try to spread those responsibilities out and uh, you know we don't really we don't find any significant weaknesses in internal control here so are there any questions on any of this <laughs> i'm not to go back and read through it all it's kind of, kind of <laughs> well, I, uh, I always tell everybody you can always call me if you go through this and you've got something you can always call me i appreciate it Appreciate it, Dan. Thanks, Thank, Thank you so much. You Your check's in the mail. <laughs> I haven't billed you yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look at our minutes from our previous meeting. See if you have any questions, comments. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the uh, February 24th meeting minutes and then later on the March 10th meeting minutes. Make the motion. Okay. Second. For a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. The March 10th meeting minutes. Meeting minutes motion. Motion. All right. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor of adopting those minutes. Okay. Motion's carried. Okay. Then we go to our financials. Uh, well, let's see if Tara's got anything for us tonight. Nothing for an open meeting. Okay. Our financials. Any questions? About those, any discussion? If not, then I entertain a motion to adopt the financial reports to be presented to us. Make a motion we accept okay. the financial report. All right, second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, motion carried. Okay. Um, our old business then, we have the second reading of the closing of the alley. If somebody will read that and then we can have a motion to adopt it. I'll read it. Okay. Ordinance 2022-01 Council, uh, unnamed alley between Smith Street and Thomas Street. Okay. Entertain a motion to adopt that ordinance. I'll make a motion. Okay, second. Any discussion regarding this motion? I second it. Is it the set of request of the, the citizens? Man? Was this done at the request of the citizens? Mm -hmm. at, at the request of one, and the others were agreeable to do it, so. 
didn't even, both of them didn't even know there was an alley back there. Ocean they've back. all used it. I don't know why they didn't. Do what? They've all used it. I don't know why they didn't. I don't know that they knew it was the city's alley, though. You know, they've they've used that property just like it was their own. You know, they've mowed it. And it's not a paved area. It's like an old uh, coal delivery. I area. know what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spent many a day back there. Okay. You walked on it before. Seen, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen plenty of people driving through there. <clears throat> Can't now because there's a big tree growing in the middle of it. <laughs> okay, any more discussion? All right, all in favor of that? Okay, motion carried. Uh, we open the floor for new business. The first thing's listed there is surplus vehicles. Uh, we've got uh, four, well, actually, five surplus vehicles uh, we've got a 2010 Ford Crown Victoria we've got a 2002 Chevy pickup truck we've got a 2004 Chevy Tahoe uh, we've got a 1999 International pumper truck from the fire department and we've got a uh, little five by eight utility trailer that we don't need is probably put together but joining two together I think it's it's uh, it's not worth very much anyway I'd like uh, I'm gonna need a, a motion to declare these uh, vehicles surplus and then we'll discuss uh, getting rid of them i'll make the motion okay Second. with discussion okay go ahead now he's seconded tony did okay um the international <laughs> pumper truck is a 99 model um uh, we've got a fire department over at rochester that would like to purchase the fire the truck from us and uh we've agreed on a price of $35,000 and I'd like to just recommend that we go ahead and sell that pumper truck uh, to the fire department at Rochester for that amount. I make a motion we sell it okay. to Rochester. And I think Lisa Mayor if I'm not mistaken does I, mean, I guess it's our decision basically but with that money they would like to pay squad off with that remainder of that payment after they sell that truck okay that's that's the yeah, way they, yeah, they talk about it to me that way but that's fine you know that's what you want to do okay you, you is, that, is that okay with the motion to yes. do that all right i'll second it okay yeah, second. any discussion and that's pretty good price for that for that year of a truck yeah. you won't find a we're, we're gonna hold they're excited about purchasing that truck so we can do that we can transfer it to another government entity with right. or without compensation yep. so they're compensating us for it but however if that does fall through and they don't purchase it i would still like to put that cap on a price that way if we put it on the internet still you know have a reserve on there that way oh, yeah. it's no not low bit so. Okay. Okay. We'll vote on that then. We agreed to sell the pumper truck to Rochester for thirty-five thousand. Um, all in favor? Okay. Motion's carried. For these other three vehicles, um, I'd like to try to put them on GovDeals.com, and we'll have a better chance of getting some. Fire mount for them, I think. Uh, yeah, we've had good luck with the county by doing that. That's all we do now is yeah. just go deals. We've had some really good luck with that. I think that's one of those that's maintained too, where it, it satisfies your advertising requirement mm. through the. And if there's not one set up, Lisa, I know that Charlie Shields has got one set up that he wouldn't care to help. Oh, we, we can set one up. We've got a buyers. We don't have a sellers okay. agreement with. Okay. So them. Any discussion about that? I'd still like to put a reserve on maybe that 2010. Do what now? Still like to put a reserve on that 
2010 cop car. I mean, I don't want going for okay. a dollar. That's what the discussion's about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how much do you, <laughs> what do you feel like? What do you feel like, sir? <laughs> Do you want to just look at uh, comparable 2010 forwards and... I'll just say, well, I'd hate to do that because it, it would go for it, really. You could probably get an NADA fair... Fair market value, fair market value for it, market value. Yeah. How, many, how many miles are on that 2010? I don't have the mileage on it yet. We'd have to... I just know they're selling for... Get all of them before we get to it. Uh, it shouldn't have a whole lot of miles. It's... Uh, there's a lot of hours on the engines what it ends up being and so well, I guess Jason would probably have a ballpark out there, wouldn't he? Well I can I can go to David Johnson over here and ask him what twenty ten Ford cruiser's worth, you know. Yep. I think okay. it'd be good. I'm good with so I'll I'll make a note to uh have a reserve on it. And the others, just let them go. Just whatever. Because they're pretty. I'll buy a truck tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I need a truck. Uh, I'll about to buy his. Sorry, I don't. We'll, I'll meet you in jail, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We did that. Never been. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I can put reserve on the others if you want me to. I don't think it. I don't think the rest of them are worth it. Do I? I don't think the rest of them are worth having a reserve on. <laughs> well, anyway, so we'll we'll go ahead and advertise these on Crown on uh, GovDeals dot com. Okay. All in favor of doing that? Okay. Motion's carried. Uh, I don't know about the utility trailer. Uh, it's So can you, let me ask you this, can you surplus that and can you advertise that in the newspaper for sealed bids? Yeah, that's there, you can add it on Facebook. You can I want to do that on that. It's only worth... Probably not worth the advertising price, 100, to be honest. $100, $150, dollars you can spend more it. on putting that in the paper. I can use it. Huh? I can use that trailer. <laughs> I can use that trailer. Okay. So if we can put that in the newspaper for sealed bids... Uh, I mean, <laughs> people are stealing them, but, you know, they have some work, yeah, right. you know. Right. We make hunt blinds and out of huh? trailers, so. They're stealing right and left, you know. They're too easy to hook up to and take <laughs> off with. Cut the chain. Okay. So I don't even want that yeah. I'll just newspaper that one. <laughs> All right, then. So, uh, need a motion to put it, seal bed in the paper. I'll make it. All right, second, all in favor. Okay. Get that taken care of. All right. Um, I'll be it on that trailer, okay? <laughs> Everybody just go yeah, on yeah. get that over with. <laughs> okay, let's see. Highest trailer you ever bought. I got uh, an email from the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority that... Um, our water tank project had been submitted for a grant by Earl Coffey, and we have received notice that we have a grant of 175,000, uh, I thought I had it written down, oh yeah, $763. Uh, it's a grant that comes to us, we don't have to match it, it's just free money. Uh, it's coming down from KIA, but I have to sign a commitment letter that we want the money. It's a preliminary start right now. So I'm asking for permission to fill out the commitment letter and send it back yeah, that we will gladly receive the 175000 plus. So does this have to be designated? You got you already designated it for a project already? or No, they did. Sign? They did. So what was the because project then? It, it was submitted by the engineer this project was submitted you know for a grant and that's what they're granting us is the amount that for that now how it arrived at that amount i don't know i think they've got so much money and they just divided among the projects they've got 
probably proportionally to what the cost was. How long? How long we got to use that? Do what now? How long have we got before we have to use it? Well, uh, there wasn't any stipulations by that. Now it's coming out of ARPA funds that KI has access to, and the ARPA funds have a stipulation that. Um, that Things have to be under contract by the end of 2024. Okay. And the money has to be expended by 2026. And so if it's not, then time. it goes back to the federal government. So we got plenty of time, right? <laughs> huh? Usually on when you do something like that, by the time you get to these projects and get your pay request and everything, it takes a while to get it down the road. And if you're using that, which is coming from ARPA funds from KIA, plus some of your ARPA funds, you kind of want to jump on things to get it up, get it done before the money runs out, before the time runs out. So I just need the permission to sign the commitment letter that you know Harper will uh, accept that money. How much of the project will that cover? Well, we don't know for sure. The project had been bid. It probably. Well, I'd say about a third of it. Okay. A third? So how much of the ARPA money that you were wanting to use on it would that leave? Well, we don't know for sure. It's been estimated it's going to cost around 500000 So you look so. probably 300 or more. Do what now? 300 or less on the ARPA funds. Yeah. Um, no. You know, I'm just trying to uh, think. We've we've received all in all from the federal government a little over 1.25 million dollars through this ARPA fund. Hartford or the county? Hartford. Uh, that's one reason you see the uh, general fund looks so full right now is because it's it's where the ARPA funds that we have received are are stored. We've still got another three hundred and fifty two thousand that we're expecting sometime this spring. It's the last half. Half of it came in the fall and half of it they said would come in the spring of the of that money. We've still got Senate Bill thirty six money coming in, which is another hundred and thirty thousand plus. So all in all, we've we've received or been promised over 1.25 million. COVID was good to us. And what was that 130,000? Where is it coming from? That's Senate Bill 36 money. It, it has to be used for um, for a water project. So we can use it and then this grant and really knock down the use of our ARPA funds for a tank rehabilitation have it to use at Ellis Park or some other some other project that comes up that qualifies. Take, take part of it, finish up down at the plant. There's a couple more projects that need to be done down there, isn't it? Well, you know, the projects really that are down there right now are fairly small. You know, the only big project we would have down there is if you decided you want to add another active float to the system and it would improve the processing of the water it would slow it down or the chemicals have more time to work you know right now we're pushing it through pretty fast they tell me and so we put a second active flow but it's it's engineers looking at approximate cost right now and it's it's well over a million dollars well that, what I was getting at though when, when Chris was down here last month yeah, he had, what, about I've got three, some other projects. He had about three different projects, right? Yeah. And we took care of one of them, what, the team? Right. And We've got the other two are, what I was talking about. don't have to be bid. They're, they're smaller. Yeah. But uh, we do need to, right, need to do those. Yeah, that's what I was I want to say something, too, right here. Whenever this, our budget that we're going to vote on tonight, whenever it is published, It's going to show that your occupational tax has over a million dollars in it. I'd like for us to think 
more frequently about using the occupational tax for our infrastructure needs because when people who are employed in the city look at that, that you've got over a million dollars, what's going to be their first idea is, you know, lower. And I don't think that's something that we can afford to do, really. I think we need to be using more of it right now to get that down where it shows that, you know, we're trying to use their money to help people in Hartford. Uh, that's something I'd just like for us to consider. Uh, but anyway, um, we digress from my request, and that was to have a motion to allow me to sign a commitment letter for that grant money. A motion that we signed it. Okay, is there a second? I uh, second. Okay, any discussion about it? Okay, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Motion carried. Um, we've got a, we've, we put out for bids the, uh, you know, the project on Country Club Lane, that pump project. And we've only got one bid, and that was the bid that was first submitted to the, to the water uh, operators about doing the project. Um, From whom? Do what now? Who, who submitted the bid? Uh, it's uh, S&K Equipment Company out of Vincennes, Indiana. Um, the Country Club Road Project is going to, well, let me just go down through it. What, they, what they're bidding on here was a, a custom building to house this. It's going to be an above ground pump set up. Um, it's got a booster package, and basically it's three pumps, uh, two 20-gallon-a-minute pumps and one 80-gallon-a-minute pump. Um, the 20 gallons will be used in times of little demand. Um, the 80-gallon will be used, it'll kick in automatically when there's a, a greater demand for the water and put more pressure into it. Um, it's got all these controls, the draw house there in the, uh, in the building. Um, anyway, uh, the, the county has, uh, promised to pay us 24000 for their part in it. Uh, the total bid is uh, $76,023. And um, by the time the county pays their part, we'll be down to about 52000 I thought roughly. they were going to pay half of it. Well, they were, Three but the original bid was for 48000 and that's what they agreed to pay twenty-four for. I mean, I can approach him and see if they will go ahead and pay this Half of this. Get, I think they should. Well, I can Either that or we uh, annex Club him. Road. But, uh, Let's do it anyways. Hmm? Let's do it anyways. That's no problem, you know. I mean, we had that commitment of 24000 but I'll approach him and say, you know, the, the bids for a much better pump system, and, you know, we'll see if they won't pay the uh, 38000 for they're half of it. That above ground building, does it have heat in it? It's a included uh, in that price? It's a fiberglass. I don't know that it uh, the pumps are the only thing that are above ground. Of course the lines are underground, but um, uh, let me see here. It doesn't say right here whether it's got heat in it or not. It's got, um, it's got an exhaust fan with matching intake, exhaust shutters, a thermostat for the fan, 
um, molded gel cold weather hoods, one for each shutter, one externally mounted switch for the fan and light. Um, I don't know that it needs heat in there, but... Who's going to maintain that building and the equipment? Us? We're putting it in, yes. In the wintertime, if it don't have some kind of heat system, wouldn't the pumps freeze up? Probably. Uh, I, I don't know. I know that our like our our pumps that uh, our lift stations that they're, they're not heated, you know. So I don't know if it's uh, they run all the time. Then well, just when needed, you know. It's just whenever the the sump fills up, then that's when they kick on, you know. So uh, evidently, I mean, I can check into it. Um, if it doesn't have heat in it, I would think they would say that it probably doesn't need heat, you know, if it, otherwise it would be listed. Um, let's see, I don't have my phone. I can call Chris right now and talk to him and ask him about... Um, Unless when it kicks off, all the water drains out of it or something. Well, it's, it's in a line, you know, it's... Uh, See, the, the water has to go through the pumps. Yeah, I understand you know, that. So, the only time they kick on is whenever there's a demand for it, you know, and it senses that there's water needed, so the pump kicks on. But whether it needs heat or not in there, uh, I, don't, I don't know. They may generate their own heat. I, I don't have any idea, but I'll, I'll uh, ask. You think it needs something for the pumps, not for you. Huh? You'd think it needs something for them pumps not to freeze up. Well, <coughs> sometimes it just takes a light bulb or something like that. Is all the heat it, it takes, you know, just to keep from. Well, it's, it, I don't know if the building, <coughs> it take more than the light bulb to heat it, keep it from freezing in there. Oh, I, I had a, a pump at a farm where we lived. Uh, it's in a well house, concrete block well house. I mean, it was above ground. And uh, wintertime, all I had to have was just a light bulb on in there, and it kept it. Uh, but you warm said enough. this was fiberglass, right? Um, fiberglass building? Let's see. It says it's a custom building, 10 foot by 10 foot. A seven foot six inch sidewall, complete with dual leaf door, 36 inch wide, two point locking device, locking handle, continuous stainless steel hinge. Uh, and this talks about the electrics and something like that. They, they, they first told me that it was um, fiberglass, but then this doesn't say anything about it, so it may be just a regular uh, stud and framework type building. That size building, it's going to take more than a light bulb to heat that. Well, I don't know how it's insulated or anything, you know. But Is the water constantly flowing? Hmm? Is the water constantly going? No. If Only are, one pump at a time, isn't it? you got the two for the slow period, and you've got the 80-gallon pump, 80 gallon pump for the... Okay, let me let me uh, just uh, we'll postpone this till the next meeting, and I can uh, check on all these questions that you've got. I point somebody go out there and blow coal in the furnace in it every night. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we may need that trailer. That trailer, we're gonna have to take that back. That trailer. Yeah, I'll call you. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll just postpone that that bid until make it old business for next time. Okay. Um, next thing is our, our budget for next year, fiscal year. Um,
supposed to give you a budget message if I can find it. Okay. All right, here's my budget message for this budget coming up. Uh, tonight we're presenting a bu proposed budget for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Uh, this budget will not be unlike, in many respects, former budgets the city has presented before. Revenues will still primarily derive from three sources, property assessment taxes, insurance premiums taxes, and occupational taxes, all expected to remain consistent with past revenues. However, the federal government has channeled funds to cities and counties for COVID pandemic relief. Uh, funds received and promised to the city of Hartford total over $1.23 million. The only stipulation to the funds is that contracts to use these funds must be signed by the end of 2024 and money is expended by the end of 2026. Uses for these funds are also very limited. If the funds are not used, they must be returned to the federal government and the general fund would revert back to its normal level. Expenditures are expected to be similar to past years, but anything uh, costly can happen at any time during the year. Employees will receive a 3% increase in wages since the cost of living has increased due to inflation. Prices for supplies and chemicals are expected to continue rising. Our water plant, now 20 years old and beginning to show its age, is needing repairs and parts replacements on a more regular basis. Some parts are now obsolete and unobtainable, causing systems to need to be reworked. Yet with costs for producing water rising, we still try to keep the cost to our citizens as low as possible, requiring fund transfers to the water account from other accounts. The maintenance police departments are experiencing rising costs as well, but otherwise are experiencing little change. We will not expect to purchase another police car until next fiscal year, which has been our practice of doing so every other year. We've experienced a low loss in staff personnel, but those vacancies have been filled more than adequately. Uh, in the near future, the major changes in expenditures may, may be the water tank rehabilitation and construction work at Ellis Park. Otherwise, no major or significant changes are anticipated at this time. We're also not contemplating any changes in our financial policy for the city. The city of Hartford is situated in the best financial positions that it has ever experienced. We're thankful for the federal government's financial help, but this is a unique experience and we cannot depend on it in the future. The situation mandates that we take this best opportunity to do the most to better our citizens' lives. I hope we can take advantage of this chance to make a difference while we have it. And that's my budget message for the year. So we're not planning on trying to create a better infrastructure in our water lines. Well, we have to do that on a as needed basis right now. You, you want, you know, you asked me to come up with some costs for replacing all the water lines to replace just the duct hole and the uh, uh, oh, the pipe uh, cost a little over 1.3 million just to, just the price of the pipe alone uh, the cost of putting it in uh, you calculate that at about $65 a foot and that takes care of digging trenching it uh, replacing the pipe Building back in with the gravel, uh, resurfacing all the streets that are affected, it's going to be a little over $7.2 million. So you're looking at about $8.5 million project to, mm -hmm. to replace all those lines. I'm not surprised at that. Do what now? I'm not surprised at that. Uh, the only funding right now that we've got available would be through either grants, which are going to be 50 50 grants. It means we'd have to come up with four, four and a quarter million. That, that's just an estimate right now. Um, or you get a loan for about 3% interest per year, something like that. That's the only place you're going to have any revenue to do that kind of a project. Now they're replacing lines as they can. They're doing one up on Burton Court. 
they got a leak up there right now, but that's they're going to replace that whole line up there. So, I mean, that's just do it as you can, you know. Just whenever there's a need, you take out the old line and put a new line in. As long as the old line's working, you let it ride. So, are you still looking? I'm sorry. Are you still looking to get this coal severance money too? Um, for the physical next physical year. Is that are you looking at MRA or LGEA? LGEA. Yeah, that uh, that is based on what we got this year because they. Really so you're just basing it basically. Mm -hmm. Definitely will not be any more than. I didn't uh, figure it would be. This is just a first reading tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it's so always no loading good. or anything. Yeah. Okay, so I need somebody to um, give us a first reading on Ordinance 2022 02. Nothing, as far as I'm seeing so far, nothing's been cut on any budgets like nothing's been taken out there's nothing that's been taken out no on any of them the 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 tank is in there along with the grant funds mm -hmm. for the reduction of the tank so what page is that on um, you'll see on your on the water on at the, the top where it says water on here no on the the detail page uh, right here. Uh huh. Is that water? Yes. Okay. In that top section, you'll see where we receive. We'll receive in one hundred seventy-five thousand seven sixty-three. And then you'll see in the bottom that correlates to it an estimated of five hundred and fifty thousand for capital outlay. Well, that would be the actual price of. So, are you designating? from ARPA funds for that resisting of the project then or? Not on that, no. That uh, 175 is KIA, which well you said was a form of ARPA funds, but it's coming from Kentucky infrastructure. We can go ahead and have the first reading and discuss this at our next you know, between now and the next council meeting, we don't have to vote on it tonight. So, give you a chance to look it over, bring questions, come to the clerk's office and ask questions at any time. You know, to Somebody read the first two lines of that ordinance and we can get get on with it. I'll read it. Thank you. Ordinance 2022 02. An ordinance adopting the City of Harford's annual budget for the fiscal year 7, July the 1st, 2022 through June the 30th, 2023. By estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of the city government. Okay, thank you. We'll consider that at our next meeting. Um, let's see, I've got a, one of the things that you were asking about, what Chris brought to us last time, um, the hardware upgrade for the ActaFlow. When he brought it uh, the first time, that was probably about a month or two ago, um, it had a six to eight week 
wait period, delivery for delivery. Now it's up to 24 to 28 weeks of delivery. Um, the cost for it is $18,899.28. doesn't require being bid. Um, it doesn't require being bid. Then why don't we go ahead and get it on order? Do what now? Why don't we go ahead and get it on order? Well, I need a motion to... The motion to, is so made. Okay. For a second. the funds out of occupation of tax. Okay, thank you. Um... If this, if these controls go down, what was that total again? It's going to be um, right now. It's going to be six to seven. It's uh, eighteen thousand eight ninety nine twenty eight cents. Thank you. What Jeff is saying, if um, if he has these already available. It'll take him about two days to change things out. We'll have to buy water from High County Water. If we don't have them, right now it's going to take six to seven months that we'd have to buy water while we wait for them to come in. Okay, is there a second? Jury okay, jury second. All right, any discussion? Any more discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. And need anything sure. else we need to get under order before we close up again? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Pardon? What does he need anything else? No, not right now. Oh, um you mean the Chris need anything else? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. He needs uh the state came by and inspected our water plant and everything and they highly recommended uh that we get the the valve that changes over from one chlorine tank to the other, and it requires electronic scales for them to sit on so that it can tell when it when it's empty. So um, the switch over is two thousand eight hundred forty three dollars and ten cents, and the uh, scales. Uh, are one thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. So it's uh, less than four thousand. About four thousand. Well, we do that too. Okay. Motion so made. Second. Yes, All right. Take Any it discussion? out of occupation of tax. Yeah. All in favor? All right. Motion carried. Um. That's all the business I've got. I've got two announcements. One of them is that uh, KLC is host, hosting the planning and zoning seminar. House Bill 55 requires so many hours every two years. Uh, they're hosting the planning and zoning seminar over at Owensboro next Wednesday. It'll be from 8.30 to 5 o'clock at the Greater Owensboro Chamber of Commerce. Uh, cost is $69. Uh, Chamber of Commerce over there is located at 200 East 3rd Street. That's next Wednesday from 8.30 to 5. You have to pre-register. Uh, if you need help, uh, Lisa can help you. <laughs> the second announcement is that uh, Grad is hold, holding an ARPA SLFRF, I don't know what all that is, State and Local Fiscal Recovery Funds. Anyway, they're holding a roundtable discussion at the Grad office. Uh, that's next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Uh, you need to register for that but there is no cost for it but you need to pre-register for state and local f federal funds well it is that's the title for it you can up there at the top and is it to kind of better discuss what you can use the money for is that what you can use the money for and uh it's for our what what cities are doing with their funds things like that you know so it's just a round table discussion that they make available to all of uh the cities and uh, I'm not sure the counties are involved with that, but you need to pre-register for that. So that's two o'clock 
next Tuesday at the grad office. That's all I've got for tonight. If uh, I've got, somebody... I've got one thing. Let me find it. Justin Count texted me and was wondering if there was anything that we could do at the Boys and Girls Club. They have a street light behind the pickup drop off area. Help me out, Dustin. What's what, do you know anything about that? There's a pole there, but there's not a light. Um, I haven't been at the last couple of meetings. So where is the pickup area? And it is big lot there in the front. Oh, it's on the, the back by the old cafeteria. Yeah. Yeah. That right entry. there in that corner. Yeah. So I, was, I didn't know if there was anything that we could do there. They need a light, but I'd put one there. I know that there oh, is on I think, one not. light on the building because I think whenever we were going to have the uh, family night or something, it was out and it was pitch black. Pitch out. black, yeah. Uh, and I assume that they're talking about like out near the road or whatever. Uh, if it's near the road, can we see if we can get maybe somebody will look if into it. If it's near the road, we can. If it's on their property, we we're right. supposed to. Right, I understand that. Do, who, why do we have these yellow lights, or whatever they are? That's just the ones that uh, KU puts in. They've, the they've replaced several of them with the LEDs. The only problem is, I don't know if y'all noticed, we walk a lot. The LEDs will come on and they'll go off. Yeah. And then they'll come on again and they'll go off. The yellow ones at least stay on. <laughs> it's weird. Can't see anything, but now yeah, they're on. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. We can look into the one if it's by the road. Yeah, I think that's I'll a good idea for us. I'll go by there and yeah. later check it out myself. What are you talking about lights? I got a question. When are we going to install the light poles on the main street? The, the extra ones we have. The extra ones? Uh, I've been in contact with uh, Royal and they were waiting to uh, they were trying to get their own boring tool. They decided uh, the the cost that we had, the estimate that we had to trench and to do concrete was what you all thought was uh, unreasonable, and I agreed. Uh, Royal is trying to get a, a boring tool where they can bore on the ground and cut down their cost quite a bit, but I've not con contacted them in the last few weeks or so, so I can call her, I can call her again and see what they're doing. Um, yeah, they wanted to dig up a trench, didn't they, and put in a new electrical line on the way up? Yeah, they're trying to do it with a, a boring tool, you know. Yeah. You can do, like you won't go under a road or something like that and cuts down on your cost a lot, but... Because you were uh, talking about doing, I think, Pulling a line off my lot there too, weren't you? From that pole in the back? Yeah, going all the way back beside your building, all the way to that pole back there is what they're going to have to do. I'll, I'll just check into it. I'm sure they put it on the back burner like I have, so. Um. Jason said he was looking in to get some of that hot patch for these potholes. What's the status on Well, the guy came in yesterday. We can. If we can get, the county doesn't need it. If we can get Beaver Dam or some of these other cities to go in with us, you know, and cut down on the hauling costs, they've got to go to Evansville to get it. And um, it's a hundred dollars a ton. We can, you know, set it back there on well, actually over the concrete pad over right. where the recycling used to be. I think it'd be a good idea. And just use. It's just hundred dollars a ton, so and I don't care. Drive a dump truck over myself and get it. You know, a ton or two would last us for a long time. You know, did you ever if get we, your little road man out and look to look at my street? Do what now? I wasn't mind it. Eyes when you were fixing the the roads around here. I said, what's the chance of getting the divots that are in? Hummingbird lighting fixed. You said you'd have to 
Okay. Get I, some little man out there to look at it. A little man? <laughs> I, I'm assuming it's man. I don't know who it is. She you know, wants to man. I'll, I'll give Jason <laughs> take a look at it. Um, of course, you know, getting any kind of blacktop or anything like that hadn't been possible. I mean, the plant's not up and up running again right now, so um, I'm trying to write all these down. And we need to get that siren fixed over by the school. Mm -hmm. It's not working yet. We I mean, just have to talk to Charlie because that's their responsibility. City city doesn't have any control over it. Yeah, they didn't come home at all. You hear the one downtown, but over there it's not doing nothing. Well they tell me that they're not designed to be heard inside of a house. Yeah, mm -hmm. I live right beside the school and it right never went by. on during the tornado. Not yeah. Because so, we were outside listening for it. I do too. Mm -hmm. They've had uh, they've had a hard time getting the signal to go from the sheriff's office out to these. Um, the receiver, they had to put it up on top. I understand they put it up on top of this one to try to get better coverage. But they'll come and check it. It'll go off, you know, and then... Make a motion to adjourn. All right. I've got one more thing to say. Okay. I walked down one day... Uh, last week to Riverside Market and got lunch. And going past twice as nice before you go up the steep steps there, Yeah. that there's not a chunk on that sidewalk any bigger than this right here. It's just okay. all to pieces. It was supposed to have been part of the sidewalk project, but then it got cut out because that, that corner right there uh, was uh, an engineering dilemma uh, trying to put in a wheelchair ramp, things like that. Um, you know, we can, we can, I guess when blacktops run again, we can have uh, asphalt services to repave it or something, you know. Uh, well, I don't think blacktops is the answer to fix the sidewalk. Well, people want to park there and um, it's not meant to be a parking place. State Highway doesn't want people parking there. It's, it's dangerous, so. Well, uh, part of it from down where the sidewalk is down, it's got some blacktop yeah. on that. But the sidewalk's still all concrete. We've got, uh, we're going to contract with a, a, a concrete person. He's got three places to repair downtown, and we can see about putting in a, a concrete sidewalk down there to, you know, to make it. Well, it looks like we just put a skim coat over the top of it because there's enough pavement uh, concrete there to yeah, support they'll just it have to, they'll have every to do it they want by to their it. standards where it'll be sufficient to last you know through <sighs> got a motion on the floor is there a second all in favor okay thank you thank you all.